move that we vote on the change. The second. Very well. If there is no further discussion, we will vote on Governor Randolph's new resolution. Massachusetts? No. Connecticut? No. New Jersey? No. New York? Mr. No. Chairman. Governor Clinton sent our delegation with strict instructions to oppose any attempt to diminish the sovereignty of New York. I wholeheartedly agree with these instructions, as will my colleague, Mr. Lansing, when he arrives. Since Mr. Hamilton chooses to ignore them, New York is divided. Delaware. Aye. Pennsylvania? Aye. Virginia? Aye. North Carolina? Aye. South Carolina? Aye. Very well, then. With three states absent, plus Rhode Island, of course, Mr. Randolph's resolution passes in committee, New York divided. The Articles of Confederation are abolished. Yeah. We may now discuss other resolutions of the Virginia Plan. Mr. Chairman. Chair recognizes Mr. Dickinson of Delaware. Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen. I, as well as others, see the need for a change in our form of government. But now, turning to the second resolution, I see words which, unless struck out, must kill it. Resolve that the rights of suffrage in the national legislature ought to be proportioned to the number of free inhabitants. Now I turn to you, Mr. Madison, as we may perhaps suppose that yours is the mind behind the Virginia Plan. Do you mean, sir, by this clause that the large states will have more delegates in the new legislature than the smaller states? Yes, because of their greater populations. And this is done in order to destroy the equality of the states in the new Congress? Most well, certainly not, sir. It is done that power might at last be derived from the people, Mr. Dickinson. Well, I'm sure this form of representation appeals to Virginia and to Pennsylvania and Massachusetts, all large states. And it may appeal to the Deep South, the Carolinas and Georgia, which believe they will become large states. But the smaller states will not accept such tyranny. change this system. Our instructions are clear, and if we discuss it, it will become our duty to retire from the Please, Mr. Dickinson, the people, not the states, must be represented equally. Surely you can see that, sir. No, Mr. Madison. I cannot see that. Mr. Dickinson, even if you're not allowed to vote for proportional representation, surely you're not required to walk out if others vote for it. You'll destroy the convention if you leave. Perhaps it is best if we leave this resolution for a while. I propose, Mr. Chairman, that we postpone discussion and voting on the second resolution of the Virginia Plan. Second? And let every state consider well losing its vote in Congress. The Virginia Plan does no such thing. Order. This has been made and seconded. All in favor of postponing discussion of the second resolution signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. We will take up discussion of other resolutions of Governor Randolph's plan in committee tomorrow. Today's session is adjourned. And so the great issue of the convention has been postponed. No doubt to allow John Dickinson of Delaware and delegates from the other small states time to concoct a plan to defeat proportional representation in Congress. Thank <laughs> you.